In today's video, I'm gonna be talking through my evening routine and how you can apply my strategies, systems, and templates to develop your own evening routine as an entrepreneur. Now, in today's video, again, I'm not gonna focus on the finite details nor the intricacies of my supplementation protocol, nutrition protocol, etc. I'm gonna focus on the variables which are gonna reap the most benefit for you and get your states of performance to that 90% bracket day in and day out. Let's dive straight into today's video. Okay, so on screen, we can see what your evening routine should look like from a high level view. And again, as I said, I'm focusing on the variables which are gonna reap the most benefit and get your state of performance to that 90% rather than the finite details and the intricacies of what an evening routine should look like. So again, let's dive straight into it. So first and foremost, prepare and start winding down at least one to two hours prior to going to bed. That's something which I adhere to every night and it's hugely, hugely important in order to feel relaxed and calm prior to going to bed. Otherwise, you may feel that state of maybe potentially anxiety, ruminating thoughts prior to going to bed, thinking about work often, thinking about the stresses in your life. And the last thing you want to want to do is actually fall asleep. So definitely having that wind down period is hugely, hugely important and very beneficial to me as an individual. Shut off social media and have no stimulation from Slack nor my email. Again, really important when it comes to preventing ruminating thoughts or any stressful situations in terms of any emails which are unpleasant, any Slack messages which are unpleasant from clients, whatever it may be, any interactions with team members which are a little bit more angsty, anything which is gonna cause you to feel stimulated and feel like you have to respond to something, you don't you don't want that in the last one to two hours prior to going to bed. If anything, the last three hours maybe. Um, de definitely have that wind down protocol in place and have that time in which you are shut off from those interactions. So I definitely relax as well as I can during that time period. Now, I'm very fortunate enough to live in this building where we have a pool downstairs. Uh, we have a sauna downstairs, we have a cold shower, we have a pool table. I tend to go down to those areas, use those facilities as much as possible in the evening, in the last three hours prior to my sleep start time in order to wind down as best as possible. Now, next action item, wear my blue light blockers three hours prior to bed. So as you can see on screen here, guys, I have my normal blue light blockers, which the clear lens. I wear them throughout the day from roughly two o'clock in the afternoon until mid evening, late evening period. And then three hours prior to bed, I then put on these bad boys, which the orange lens blue light blockers from Blue Locks. Um, really great company as well, so definitely check them out. So these are the lenses that I wear three hours prior to bed. The reason as to why it is three hours prior to bed is actually quite simple. Um, if you're exposing yourself to blue light three hours prior to bed, your melatonin secretion will not be in its optimal state. And it takes three hours of non-exposure from blue light for your melatonin to be secreted at an optimal rate. Now, if you're exposed to blue light sources, which are junk light, like for example, a normal light bulb, if you're going to restaurants, if you're in the cinema, if you're playing games with your friends, if you're watching TV or from the computer, those are awful blue light quality sources, okay? Now it's gonna be really detrimental when it comes to producing melatonin and actually wanting to, your body wanting to fall asleep at the right time and get into a great state of deep sleep and obviously acquire REM sleep as well in the latter stages of your sleep cycles and obviously sleep duration as well. So a really, really important variable to be focusing on there. Exposure to awful blue light source in your home and in restaurants is something you definitely should be aware of and something which you should be looking to mitigate as much as possible. And if you can do, definitely pick up a red incandescent light bulb as well. So on screen, you'll see there's a red incandescent light bulb from Amazon. Guys, they're really cheap. You don't need to be picking up anything crazy expensive from Philips, which are like the 100 pound light bulbs, especially if you're on a tighter budget or a, you know, a smaller budget. Just pick up a red incandescent light bulb from Amazon Literally, all you have to search, there you go, four pounds. Super, super simple. That's gonna be a much better quality light source than any light bulb which is in your apartment, in your home, uh, in restaurants, whatever it may be. So switch them out and put them in place straight away. Okay, next action item, wearing an eye mask. Now, this is really great, and this is one that I have here, which I use, which I use every night. This is really great if you live in an urban environment. Now, hopefully you have blackout blinds in your living space. However, if you are traveling frequently and you're going from Airbnb to Airbnb, like a lot of entrepreneurs I work with do, then having this is gonna be really key as well. And also that applies to you if you live in an urban environment where you may have street lights, you may have car lights, you may have any kind of light source externally interfering with your sleep. This is gonna be really, really important and hugely beneficial. Again, we don't want to expose ourselves to any light source whilst we are sleeping because there's receptors in our skin which informs us we should be awake and prevents our quality of sleep from being so great from in response to that light source pretty much. Okay, so if there's any external light source, like I said, like street lamps, cars going by, make sure you are wearing one of these and make sure you have your blackout blinds in place as well. If there are any LED light bulbs 
or like sources in your room, make sure you cover them with tape as well. If there's like a Wi-Fi monitor in your room, which definitely shouldn't be, or if there's an alarm clock in your room, again, which definitely shouldn't be, um, and they have any light bulbs in there, make sure you cover that up with blackout tape as well to make sure there's no light source which is gonna interfere with your sleep quality. Okay, earplugs, again, really important if you live in an urban environment where there's a lot of street cars going by, there may be airplanes going by, you may live in a block of flats like I do where there's people upstairs being noisy at like two in the morning, they're moving furniture, they're having an argument, I don't know, whatever it may be. Those are, again, negative things which are gonna have a really bad impact on your sleep quality, okay? And obviously then increase your awake time, as I said on screen. And you'll be able to see it very clearly from wearing your aura ring and tracking your metric data as well. So if, for example, I know that there's gonna be disturbances in terms of my environment and my neighbors are quite loud or you know they like to party or they're having an argument, whatever it may be, my wake time will be heightened, hence why I wear my earplugs at night as well to ensure that my wake time is between 30 minutes to an hour, which is the more optimal range. If anything, 30 minutes is much better, okay? I then plan tomorrow today, and then I then plan this out in a very simple manner. So I'll show you on my iPad here. I use an app called Things. Um, hopefully you guys can see that on the webcam. If not, I'll go into a screenshot shortly. I use an app called Things. Now, in the way in which I plan my day, it's actually pretty simple. I break it down into four categories. So uh, to be completed, which are my three really important tasks for the day, which can move the needle further forward of my business. So they're my deep work blocks. That's what my deep work blocks comprises of. I then have a radar, so they're my smaller tasks, like for example, sending an email to someone, making sure I book in a meeting, whatever it may be. I then have my study blocks, okay? And then I then have my personal blocks as well. So those are my four categories when it comes to planning my day in advance. And again, I use the Things app. Now, the really great thing about the Things app, as you can see on screen here, is that you can connect it with iCloud. So when I'm actually planning my day and I have my calendar in front of me, it connects with the Things app so I can see everything on my day, on the things apps, so my wake up, my workout, my morning walk, my study blocks, my to be completed blocks, any meetings I have. It's really, really helpful. It's a really great platform to have. So I definitely advise picking that up as well. Let's carry on. So again, as I said, I'm focusing on the variables which are gonna reap the most benefit here as opposed to the finite details and the intricacies of every protocol I put in place. So I'm not gonna dive into anything in too many uh, complex terms or the, the essentials, sorry, or the complexities of what I put in place currently. I'm just gonna focus on the essentials. So you could also incorporate a melatonin spray, which is great when it comes to bioavailability and also absorption rate as well, which is much better as a spray, which can be released more gradually throughout the night as well. Again, pick up the red incandescent light bulbs. If you guys currently live in Europe or any other climate where it's currently hot, because obviously it's summer, make sure you're picking up things like breathable blankets, pillows, and sheets. And again, these are really cheap. You don't need to be investing in anything that's super expensive like a bed jet or anything like that. You can pick up these variables instead. So again, you simply search up breathable blankets, pillows, and sheets on Amazon. This is the American Amazon actually, but as you can see here, $29, not particularly expensive at all. The pillow, $35, $31, not expensive at all again. Breathable sheets, again, around $30. So pretty good price range right there. You could obviously then invest in other sources of tech, like for example, a chili pad and a bed jet, a bed jet being a ventilation system for your bed, which is quite expensive. It's in the multiple thousand range. The chili pad being a little bit more efficient, which is just a pad you put on your bed, which cools down the bed temperature. Again, temperature being a really important variable when it comes to your sleep quality. So put something in place to optimize your sleep, your temperature of your room, the temperature of your bed, and make sure your sleep quality is heightened as a result. You could also then make sure that your room temperature is at its best uh, temperature as well. So currently my room temperature is set at 18 degrees every night, and that is optimal for me when it comes to optimizing my sleep environment as well. Uh, make sure the room is also ventilated with clean air source as well, so I always leave my window wide open. If you guys live in an urban environment and noise disturbances is an issue, you could also invest in a white noise filter, if not wear the earplugs as well. Make sure you invest in an Aura Ring. It's a much better tool than the Whoop Band I've tested personally, and I think it's much more efficient. So invest in the Aura Ring. I do love the database. Um, I also then complete some foam rolling in the evening, again, like two hours, one hour prior to bed for relaxation and to relieve any tension which has occurred throughout the day from being in a stress, stressful environment like work, for example. You can also wear woolly socks, which is gonna lower your core temperature. So again, guys, these are the essentials. These are the variables which can reap the most benefit when it comes to optimizing your output and performance with your evening routine as well. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you're leaving a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment below if you have any questions at all. And check out my previous videos when it comes to optimizing your health, performance, and output.